John Busick is with a company called Renaissance Electronics, and here at CES, they brought out a level four autonomous car based on a Lincoln MKZ. And John, give us your quick thoughts on level three, level four, that's what everyone's debating these days. Where do you think it's going to end up? Well, I think it'll take some time. I think you're going to see sort of baby steps to move up each of the levels, and that's something we certainly want to help the OEMs do. So here in this car, we focused on a lot of the challenges we think that OEMs are going to have getting to those higher levels. Things such as functional safety, things such as low power consumption, things such as cybersecurity are all the things that we focused on and have addressed with this first edition of our autonomous car here. Well, let's go through some of those things, and let's start out with redundancy. You guys have built layer upon layer of redundancy on this. Explain what you're doing and why. Well, we wanted to learn, you know, if, if, if the driver just wanted to say, hey, take a nap, and this car will take me where I want to go, you know, what does it take in terms of our processors to ensure that if something went wrong, the car could keep driving and find a safe place to pull over, All right? So this is our first cut. We have an example of an architecture that can do that, and what we'll do is we'll spend the next few years continuing to learn ways that we can better optimize that. And by better optimize, you mean instead of having multiple motherboards and chips, get it down to just a few. Yeah, that's the goal. So we'll see where we end up. It's certainly challenging, but uh, we like challenges. You also talked about low power consumption. What are you down to and how'd you get there? So in this car right now, we're using six devices that all do different things, but when you total them up, we're at about 25 watts for all six added together, which is something we're really happy with. We've worked really hard to get to that, and we want to stay there. You know, as we add more capability to the car, we don't want that power to go out of control, because it's one thing that's really helpful to OEMs is if they don't have to find ways to remove the heat. You know, maybe we can just prevent the, from, the heat from being there in the first place. So for those of us like me who don't exactly know what 25 watts means, give me some sort of comparison as to what you're talking about of it being good. Um, I think that's... That's about, that's a pretty darn, darn good target. If you could keep that, I mean, if we go lower, we will, but I'm actually pretty darn happy with that as a starting point. Because, you know, with, with automotive, the fuel economy, things like this is very important. So any way we can get that down, we want to do that. But in terms of a starting point, I think that's pretty darn good. You talked about cybersecurity too as well. That's a big concern with everybody going into autonomous vehicles. Everyone's got their hair on fire about a hacker getting in. What kind of protection have you got in this car? So all of our devices come equipped with features that enable you to create secure communications, right? Things like encryption, things like authentication, right? So someone can't just come in and make, it, make themselves look like, you know, a signal that is supposed to be there, right? If you don't have the keys, right, you're going to look like an imposter and the system will know you're there. That's the key. And we've actually shown an initial concept of that in this car. So, I mean, are you telling me that this is hack proof? We're on our way. We're on our way to hack proof. Okay, you've also got V to V capabilities in this car. You're using uh, short range to direct communication. S uh, <laughs> if I get this right, SRDC. Others are talking about using LTE. Uh, you know what you might find in your phone. What are your thoughts on that, and which way it might go? I'm going to say that that's a wait and see. I, I think it go either way. Um, where the market moves is really hard to predict, but I think what we want to do is prepare for both. We're starting in this car with DSRC. Right? That's, a lot, that's a direction a lot of our customers have kind of told us that we should, we should look into first, so that's where our solution is now. Uh, but if we need to adapt to where the market goes, we'll certainly do that. What are the advantages of LTE? I think with LTE, you're going to see that there's some potential for it being um, already more within the infrastructure of a city, hey, a traffic light, right? something that you want the car to detect in the infrastructure of a driving area. Maybe it'll be easier to create that infrastructure with LTE, potentially. Gotcha. Hey, thanks so much for bringing us up to date, and I'm real impressed with the car that you put together here. Thank you. Keep tuning in. We've got a lot more coming to you from CES. Mitsubishi Electric can help you build heart-racing, awe-inspiring products with the quality you expect, exactly as designed, faster than you thought possible. We are Mitsubishi Electric. You know us for our quality. Get to know us for our innovation.